rolling. Okay. Um, very quick to start. Oh, I'm going to have to turn off connection sounds. Um, we're going to try to keep this um, to within an hour. Uh, everyone's got shit to do, and you don't need to hear me rambling for that amount of time. Um, if you have questions as we go along, throw them in general channel. Uh, try to keep them towards situations like, well, can you explain more of this as opposed to what, like, what about this hypothetical situation? Um, just to make sure that it's, you know, obvious what we're trying to answer here. Um, so I put a quick um, agenda, you know, because I'm a nerd and I like agendas in the announcement. So I got five main things I want to hit on. Um, info from the two of us. I mean, and then we'll go from there. All right. Give like one minute just so I can turn off connection sounds and give any last minute stragglers chance. You all got unwhitelisted. That's what happened. <laughs> Hope everyone's well today. Welcome. Oh, okay. shit. I just realized that some people are probably like, damn, that's who I've been dealing with this. Because <laughs> I never speak. I just blew my own cover. Your own cover's blown. Okay, let's just jump in. Um. So the first big thing I want to talk about is quality of role play. What does that mean? Um, is it subjective? Absolutely. Um, and, and what we're trying to do when we put quality of role play as a rule. All right. Uh, and so the main thing I want, I want to realize um, is that quality of role play is something that we observe about ourselves and try not to worry about what other players are doing. Um, and so what we look for and you know is when we're watching streams or you know playing right alongside you and that kind of thing people interacting with one another all we're looking for is people to have um believable characters that are existing in this setting you know there there's it's a post-apocalyptic scary world we're just hoping that people are out there with you know goals and aspirations hopes and fears i mean and that that'll lead to these things will inform your rp actions um so you know as a for example and i'm singling no one out here i just know it's been on everyone's mind and we've talked about it a lot lately is something like hands up rp we know that this is something that um it happens on other servers because it fits the letter of the law uh, on some servers and it could in some situations fit the letter of the law here or letter of rules right um i i only pick this one specifically right now to say you know uh <laughs> Sorry. Poppers. Poppers. Because um, I put it out there because we're not concerned about the action of someone demanding someone else put their hands up. It's a situation, you know, if you don't want that person to do something with their hands, you tell them to put their hands up. It's a pretty easy thing to do, right? So that by itself is not low quality RP. It's what comes next that is the, the problem, right? So if you're immediately blasting away, and or you know doing anything that's not really role playing that's when quality of role play becomes an issue um and a single situation is not really going to concern us in any way um and sometimes you know even situations you think you're controlling can go suddenly sideways you know and you're trying to hold someone up or anything else is happening suddenly there's guns firing because people have guns and that's what happens you know one one off is not a big deal you know, no one, no one's really uh, stressed about that. Um, what we're worried about is patterns. So if someone's <laughs> Jesus, he's been quiet all day. I'm sorry. He wants to get a word in. Uh, my father-in-law's here. I think is what he meant is it, we get tickets and we get messages all the time that this person has terrible RP. I don't think they should be on the server anymore. Like for one. That's not you, me, Buckle, God, anyone's decision to make. Like, we're not the RP police here. We're mainly looking for things that violate the rules. And if they're borderline and they continue to be borderline in a pattern of behavior, that's when the quality of RP comes in. You can't just be like, hey, this person has shitty RP or this one incident was shit. You know, I think he's breaking the rules here. Like, who in here can ever say that they had that they've never had a bad RP moment? And if you do, then you're a narcissistic piece of shit. 
<laughs> point being, everyone fucks up every now and then. You know what I mean? It's like, it can't just be one incident that this person is terrible at RP and you have some sort of, you know, bias against them for the rest of their lives. Some people have bad days. It happens. It's about how you react to those things. And if you continue to put yourself in those situations, if you have a bad interaction based on your RP and you just can keep doing that and you don't learn, that's when the quality of RP thing comes in. Yep. And the main thing as part of that is just remember there are all of us players, the people in this community sitting here right here, we're on the other side of the screen when something goes, you know, goes wrong or something happens. So that's why we include things like, you know, value for life and the quality of role play, because we want to make sure that, you know, e even if we're playing the most, you know, ruthless, psychotic, terrible cannibal type characters, whatever, we're, we're playing together. We're all community and we need to value everyone's, you know, time. Um, so that's why we, we look at those things and make sure that people aren't egregiously repeating the same patterns. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think that's, it's important to just, when I keep quality role play in mind for yourself, woof, as you go forward. And um, hopefully people understand now, it's like if, um, you know, we pull someone for quality role play if, we, if you end up in a ticket and we talk to you the number one thing is really going to happen is that we're going to talk to you first and then hopefully everyone gets a chance to understand that you know what i said there's people on the other side of the screen and yeah, I'll provide I, a mean, I think a lot of people forget that sometimes they, like i get it. the thing about daisy is is that i've had people message me like there's something wrong with your server i go hours and hours without seeing people like what can we do and like Usually those people don't have much Daisy experience because that's like the nature of Daisy. And, that, and for me personally, that's what makes the game so great. It's like you have so much downtime and then something finally happens, whether it's like a hostile encounter or, you know, something along those lines. That's what makes the game that much better for me. Am I yelling? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that me? Oh, OK. Yeah, sorry. I just kind of cut you off. No, you're fine. Um. So that's going to lead me into talking about tickets overall because um, it ties into this. And I know that um, I think a lot of you are frustrated with how we respond to tickets, um, especially when you're trying to help out and report a rule break um, or maybe how long it may take us to respond to them. Though we try, you know, rule break ones, we try to jump on immediately. Um and and lore ones too but i'll get to that at the very end that's i think because i think that's separate but that's like uh, a whole separate thing yeah uh but i know people are, are are concerned i think because you you want you you feel like something bad has happened um and and you put it in there you you do you do your diligence you get a video you throw it in there um and then we come in and we're like yeah no there's this role play here and um nothing you know this is fine um, and you don't want to hear that because your character has been killed or have been robbed or something like that. And, um, you don't want to hear that nothing's happened and I totally get that. You know, I hate when my characters are shot or robbed too. Um, and so that's why I put this now is cause I don't tell you, it's, it's a, it's a pattern. So if you put in a thing and we say, Hey, there's no rule break here. Um, that doesn't mean that we didn't also then go talk to the person in the video. Yeah. Um, and it also doesn't mean that we're not looking at the logs routinely. AMG keeps an eye on the logs constantly. And when we see people who are like maybe a little too gun happy, we try to figure out what happens first and pull them into a ticket or we send them a DM and we, we figure out what's going on. Um, vast majority of the time, these are one-off situations and it's, and it's okay. Um, but sometimes it's not. And this is how we start building up these ideas, the patterns. We, you know, we write names down and we keep an eye on them. Um, you know, and there are some nights, admittedly, where I will just sit and hide under the geometry and watch events because I'm watching players go against each other. And I wait to see, you know, um, you know, what happens so that I can record it too. Um, and it's and we don't always tell you if, if something results in someone being banned or removed from the server or being spoken to, um, we don't immediately tell you the ticket submitter because we do try to keep privacy of the tickets um, as a thing. Um, we don't want people being shamed by the community because they broke a rule and we're given the opportunity to go back 
and and play by the rules and not uh, do you know and um not get an opportunity to show that they can be a good role player and i think you know if you look at anyone in this channel right now you know there are people in here who have been spoken to um that we said hey listen you know that we want a little bit more, more role play out of you a little more understanding that you know we're all people trying to play the game together you know just just keep that in mind and you know you'd never know because they're out there right now being fantastic members of the community just like the rest of you um and yeah that's important to us to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to speak their, their piece um, that we look at all, all sides of a rule break in a, in a ticket when it comes in, because it's, a, it's, you know, every story has got three sides, right. And, you know, uh, and we want to make sure that when the, when that ticket comes in or, and when discipline has to happen, you know, in unfortunate situations that it's treated as fairly as possible, you know, um, We've unfortunately had a, a you know an uptick in bans like over the holiday break time you know say last month and a half, um, but we've also had a, you know probably just as many people pulled, spoken to, and put right back into the server and are out there kicking ass. Yeah, to piggyback on that, it's like he just said. There's been people that we spoke to maybe in the first couple of weeks that probably should have been banned then, but we gave them a second chance and haven't heard a single word from them then, since, and they've been exemplary people in the community. So we're always willing to give people a second chance. If you display to us that you're unwilling to learn from your mistakes, then, I mean, it's an easy it's an easy decision. And I like things Zoner said up top. When It's one thing to get upset the, the way we uh, respond to your tickets. If you don't take the steps to help us by giving us video, giving us thorough breakdowns, if you just say, hey, I got shot and you don't even tell us where and then you get upset how we handle it. I mean, I don't really know what you expect. So, you know, record everything. Give us as thorough as information as possible. And to piggyback on what he said, we meticulously catalog everything just because something wasn't resolved in your ticket and that person you wanted to get banned didn't get banned doesn't mean that they don't have a check next to their name now that we're building a case on them. This whole thing is all about building cases, no matter what it is. So if someone screws up and you think nothing was happened to them, then you're wrong because everything is meticulously cataloged and that's how we build cases on people. So if someone keeps you know, doing things and breaking the rules, that's how we eventually discipline them. It's like, oh, look at this. I have these, these, and these, these three incidents that you were involved in. Can you explain that? And when we have things meticulously cataloged like that, they can't really say anything because all the evidence is right in front of their face. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're volunteers. Neither me and Buckle really even have the time to manage this community. I don't even know how the hell we even manage it <laughs> to begin with. Black so sleep. just keep that in mind. Like, you know, people messaging me all the time, just with outlandishly unreasonable things. Just keep in mind, you know, it, it, we're, we're all volunteers at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like we have a lot other stuff going on. So if you feel like we're not responding to your tickets enough in a, in a you know, a speedy fashion, then I don't really know what to tell you. Yeah, last word on it is we do value every ticket you put in. If you've ever felt pushed aside or disregarded because we didn't give enough explanation of our rationale, you know, I, I and I will readily admit that I am not very patient sometimes um, and I am an asshole about it sometimes. But we want tickets and I would rather a thousand tickets to come in to have 999 of them be nothing that nothing's gone wrong that hopefully I can explain clearly why nothing's gone wrong to get that one that says, yes, this is something actionable. Um, you're never going to bother us by submitting a ticket. You never have to apologize for it. You know, just make sure he's like, this is what happened. You know, this is what happened from my perspective. Um, we'd like you to look at it and then, you know, off we go and we'll take care of it. Yeah. I think that was one of the main points we meant to touch on is that a lot of people seem to be like apprehensive to, either reach out to us or put in tickets as if like you're bothering us. Like this is literally what we're here for, literally what we signed up for and what we're throwing away a lot of our lives to do because we fucking enjoy it. We love everybody in this community. We love doing this stuff. So for people to be like, hey, I don't want to message you because I feel like I'm bothering you or I don't want to put in a ticket because we're bothering you. Like that's the job description. That's literally why we're here. So if you have something, bring it to us. Like he just said, we'd rather have to go through a thousand tickets and close them all and say nothing's here than not get any at all and just be sitting there, you know, with our dicks in our hands wondering what's going on on the server. <laughs> so it's really up to you guys to help us out. You know what I mean? We can only go off what you guys tell us. So um okay um if you have questions about that again hold them to the end um uh we, we'll get to them just um we'll move along here um okay 
quick bit because it does come up in tickets. Um, group sizes. Uh, hopefully this will be quick. Um, eight is the maximum for amount of occupants inside of a base. Um, why am I mentioning this? Because it was asked a hundred times. So, um, uh, so it's it's you know eight all together in one place, um, and we don't care if um, you know you get a big group and then you're heading someplace and you bump into another big group and you're all traveling together or you all end up in a town together and you're all standing around. That's not a big deal to us, um, you know, because people are going to congregate where there's action. You know, you know, uh, look at Tarnow any night of the week. Last night there was what thirty of you all hanging out in one town. Totally cool, not a big deal. What we're concerned about and why we had to put the rule in um, is when it's a large amount of people all working towards a common goal. Um, it's eight total residents online or offline. Um, so it's if when I mean by common goals, like if you guys are heading out doing a farm or whatever, that's fine. But invariably what we'll see, because again, it is the apocalypse, um, you know, and everyone's got guns and no one's trustful of one another um, appropriately. Um, it can result, it, it's going to lead down the path of PVP. And we have seen it happen that way. And um, we know it's completely unrealistic to a real world scenario. You're going to be able to, you know, run around in a group as large as you can manage. Um, so, um, it's a, uh, but in the game, in the server, there's only 80 slots of active people, right? So eight people is already one, uh, is already 10% of that. So, and we feel like 10% of a server for one group of people operating at one goal, um, is, um, is the cap is because the bigger it is, we can result in power gaming and then, or, um, it's just server performance, really, especially once um, you get those um, bases up with your, your monstrous walls and things like that. Then you pile 30 people into them. Um, look at any of the big cities where people are living, Nadbor, Tarnow, etc. cetera. Um, even the tiny little area, Krisnik there with the gigantic walls and stuff, the more people you put in there, server performance just starts to degrade. So we're concerned about those two things. And that's just, we want to throw it out about that. And more importantly, it's like you feel like you need to have eight people to achieve your goals, then you probably need different goals. Like I, I've never understood that me personally, but I don't know. Like I don't really understand the need for massive groups. Like I get it. That's human nature. You want to group up with people. That's what humans do. But there's so much out there to do that. You don't need to roll around to 30 people every time. Like, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm there with you, but I know that we're not, there's other ways to role play and do it than just how we see it. Um, for sure. So yeah, and um, sometimes <laughs> groups will pair off with other groups, you know, and you'll have, you know, four in this base and five in that base and everyone's got little things and everyone knows the codes to one another and stuff. And some cases totally in, uh, innocent, it's fine. You're gonna have alliances and things like that. In some cases it's not. And if you think you're being sneaky about it, you're not. Um, that's not an accusation about anything, but I know like if you're trying to get around that eight person cap, um, by trying to like spreading yourselves out a little bit, um, but at any given time you can call on, you know, five, six, seven more people anywhere you go do something like that's again, you're Same obeying. Thing. Yeah. You're obeying the, the letter of the rules, but not the spirit of them. So it's not a huge deal. This hasn't happened a lot. It just had came up as a question a few times and was posed as a question. So I put it on. Um, okay. I know this next one pisses people off to no end and it's notes or meta in discord. Uh, or in discord here is a shorthand for literally any way you can communicate with someone outside of the game. And I'm just going to say discord. So you get, um, I want notes in game as much as the rest of you. One of my crowning accomplishments in the first red zone was we had barrels filled with blood and a note that said their blood type. And I mixed all that shit up to be evil and watch someone die as a cause of it. And, uh, I, I miss shit like that. Um, I want there to be notes in the game. I want you to be able to do it. It's completely unrealistic that you can't just pick up a piece of charcoal and paper or write a fucking message on the ground with logs, you know, 
20 feet high or whatever on the ground to say, hey, I was here, we're going to do this, et cetera. Absolutely agree with you 100%. That should be possible to do. The reason why it's not allowed, though, um, is because the messages can never be intercepted. They, no matter what, if you go to that base and you leave a piece of paper on the ground or you tack it to some place or whatever, you did that physically in game, but then shared it in Discord, no matter what, that message is going to get to its intended recipient. And that information can then be acted on by someone. And because and everyone else can see it too. Like it's not a note anymore. It's you just telling everybody what's going on. Like it's yeah. When, when you've put it into the stories channel for sure. Like that's, that's a huge thing or in departed. Um, when you say like I died and you know, this person killed me and shot me here at this time of day at the sun at this angle. And now you've given other people Action information intelligence. Yeah. Right. And all it takes is one person to misuse that information they got from another source in game around other people. Now those other people have received it in game legitimately, not knowing that it was meta information. Um, and that starts a whole chain of events. And now everyone's saying, Oh, there's meta gaming or power gaming or people stream sniping, etc." And it may just have happened because you thought it was harmless to say, I wrote a little note to my friend about this thing. And this is where we're going to be. Right. Um, I, Plus, uh, yeah. it makes us have to sit here and sift through thousands of messages to see who's metagaming and who's not. It's like yep. it, just, we trust all of you, or for the most part. It's not that we don't trust people to do it right. It's just that there's always going to be people that don't, and it's either an all or nothing thing. Until like I'm checking the workshop every single day, you know what I mean? Like that's one of the main mods I'm always looking for. If someone's going to figure out how to put the fucking notes back in the game, so we can just get all this bullshit, you know, aside and alleviate some of our headaches but if it was possible i'd imagine someone would have done it already so yeah um i i know it's a bummer um and i know that as time has gone on i have become more and more of a hard ass about it um i went from trying to be caustically funny to caustically toxic about it because i don't know how better to point out that this is literally said in the rules you cannot use discord or anything else to communicate outside of game um same so, goes for the radios i mean yeah. it's discord using discord is not using a radio a radio has a finite distance to it like if you're just sitting in a discord lobby you could be completely on the other side of the map as the other person like i don't understand how that's an accurate substitute for a radio and then people could say well we only use it when we're in radio range and How's that going to be policed? Like, it just opens a can of worms that it's impossible to, to continue. Yeah, I know that decision really is going to upset some people. And I, yeah, I just ask that you, you be patient and understand why we're doing it. You know, the vast majority of you were using it for very innocuous, innocent reasons. Um, sat phones. It's the apocalypse. There's no satellites flying around giving you satellite phones. Um, we'll come back to questions here, but I do, uh, I saw one in there about, can you pass notes to someone else if you're standing right next to them? So, um, yes. And here's a, here's the limited ways that, um, discord we'll use discord to allow quote unquote meta information. Um, one is the lore channel, anything in there, you all can know flat out. If, if you want, there. you don't have to. Correct. That's another thing. People think like they have to know the red zones or not the red zones, like the POIs. Like you don't have to be like, Hey, I know there's a gun store here. You can totally play oblivious to it. The red zones are kind of like accepted meta, but yeah. like you don't have to know those things. It's really up to you if you want to, like, it's not something that we force on you. It's really, we'll get more into that with the lore stuff when we get to that, but it's not something that we're like forcing onto you. The red zones are, are a different story because that's just kind of like the nature of the server. And that's just like the accepted meta of it all, but everything else, like it's really up to you if you want to pursue that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, so another way is, again, we'll, we'll get to it, but a lore tickets are effectively meta because you know, you found something, then you have to come to Discord for us to put something else in there. Um, yeah. Hopefully everyone like understands why we're doing that, you know, because like you can't draw in books and shit like that or like... Which yeah, I wish I you fucking could because <laughs> a lot of this would be so much easier. Like all the stuff that you guys want, we probably want twice as much as you do. Notes, 
radios working, cars working, like we're right there with you. But this is kind of the stance we have to take to appease the most amount of people and police it the best we can. Because if we allowed certain things, it would be impossible to police and it would just be open for abuse. Most of you would be able to be trusted with it. But, you know, there's always going to be a few bad apples that ruin it for everybody. Um, the next one is the departed channel. Um, <laughs> like uh, you see me in there probably once a week saying too long, deleting shit. Um, the purpose of the departed channel was to confirm because we don't have a new life rule and we don't have a forced permanent, a uh, perma rule. The departed channel is simply to confirm that your character, a character that you watch died, you know, get shot or whatever has officially permanently died. So you can inform your RP. All right. Um, you know, so the um, the differences between, you know, like, oh, God, he just died versus, oh, she's badly wounded. We need to get her some care or something like that. Or like, you know, um, if you're the killer or whatever, you you get the idea. You act like she's dead or wounded, but you can move on. So if that's what the departure channel is for. And we don't mind if people put in a little quip or something about that, the you know, something that was unique or special about your character. You know, there's a lot of funny ones in there, a lot of touching ones in there, as long as they're kept short. But any meta information beyond the fact that your character is permanently dead, no, get it out of there. Don't write gigantic novels. That's what stories are for. You go in the stories channel and write the biggest self-eulogy you want about your characters, by all means, get out there. But otherwise, the that channel is just, you know, so-and-so is dead, you're dead, gone. Yeah. Another character shouldn't be able to go into Discord and find out information that they wouldn't be able to find out in-game, other than someone that they were just around is dead. That's yep. Um, and so the question that got me started down this path was, what if you're standing next to one another and you've role played out drawing something on a, on a page, um, and then you hand that per to the person and then you send them a picture through discord or a little thing that you absolutely, but you have to keep in mind that that's only going to work between the two of you. And if someone takes that paper from you, you know, you, that it's, you're at that point forced to show it to them because to them, it's just a blank page. So keep that stuff limited and to specific role play. Um, that stuff that's um, flavor, you know, like if your character is an artist versus, you know, you, like I walk up to you and I'm going to hand you my battle plans as this piece of paper, then go into a channel. So this one's subjective and harder to police. And neither of us are naive enough to believe that because we've told you guys to stop using Discord for notes that you've actively stopped doing it. You're probably in dm still doing it but keep that in mind that that that's what it's you know it's if it's not in game you can't you can't use it except under those very small circumstances Whew. um I, I forgot to mention something earlier when we were talking about the, like the hands up initiations it's for me it's like it boils down to this like having someone put their hands up to disarm them is perfectly reasonable that's why it's standard procedure for police officers to tell people to put their hands up so you can see their hands and that they don't have anything to hurt you it's it's not the act of having people just put their hands up it's when you just shout out of nowhere and you give people split second fight or flight reaction decisions to make with guns in their hands like have none of you noticed a pattern that that normally ends in a shit show gunfight it's people with guns in their hands you shouldn't be giving them split second decisions to react you know what i mean like there's plenty of ways to make someone realize that they are outnumbered that they are outgunned and that they have to do what you say through communication and through intimidation so once you get to the point where okay i'm gonna frisk you now put your hands up they already know in the back of their mind that they they're beaten and they have to do what you say. When you just blurt out, put your hands up, the average person, if they have a gun in their hand or not, is always going to panic. That's just human nature. And in Daisy, in a game where everyone's just like, you know, ramped up to 10, like that's just how it goes more more times than not. So you have to be mindful if you don't have the tactical advantage on someone, then maybe it's just not the time to rob them. But just screaming hands up or screaming whatever it like it just usually ends in shit show. So there's plenty of ways to convey to someone that they, all right, then I should probably do what this person says, you know, through, through, you know, role play. That's what we're fucking here to do. And then once you get to that point where it's like, okay, I'm going to have my friend here disarm you so I can, you know, frisk you or whatever. They already know in the back of their minds what the situation is. But when you give people fight or flight responses with guns in their hands, People are going to panic, and that's why we see more times than not people just, you know, pop off. It turns into a gunfight, and then nobody wins. Like, 
So just try to be mindful that, like he said earlier, there's other people on the other ends of these computer of, of these characters. They're not just you know NPCs. So you may not like you're not always worried about whether that if you're especially if you're robbing someone you're not really giving a shit about their possessions but in the back of your mind have a little bit of meta to realize that that is another person and that we're all here to have a good time at the end of the day so if you know whether you're a hostile character or not just try and be mindful that there's other people on the server with you so that's my little mini rant on that because i forgot <laughs> um okay we're actually doing pretty well on time here so very quickly i'm going to get to a thing about uh lore um and who this is uh tough for me to talk about and not also sound like a conceited prick so just bear with me for a few minutes um <laughs> it was never intended to get as big as it did um it was supposed to be a thing in the background um that people um you know could seasoning. get little hints yeah exactly this is what yeah we call it seasoning for a little bit um and it was like if you find things that you know it was like any like an rpg when you like you go rooting around you go off course and you decide to search a trash can or a computer or something you get a little file that gives you a little thing oh this is a thing that's happened um you know oh cool that's a background thing um and since i've been you know been playing dungeons and dragons my whole life and you know all the tabletop games and been a dm and storyteller i went a little too big early on um and <laughs> ended up in some lore events and the first one i think was pretty okay um, the second one was way too large and then I dialed it way back. Um, and then I tried to do smaller things to again, go back to that seasoning. So even if, like people still are pretty happy about lore event two. Um, that was the one with, with Madeline stuff. I could not control anything that happened there. And that's why I went way down low with it. Um, so events became things like the red smoke, you know, so I did the red smoke for a little while until I got my objective, et cetera. And so, um, I tried to put it there. If you wanted, said Madeline was dead. Yeah, she ain't dead. <laughs> I just had to chime in. Sorry, good job. No, no, you're good. Um, so that's I put I, I submerged it. Um, went in the background. I ended up playing a little bit. You know, AMG and I both played characters that you could interact with. You know, a bunch of them um, to do that same kind of thing. Um, so a lot of you still get really jazzed up about it. Um, your characters goals now some of them are to chase lore and that's cool i'm not gonna tell you how to play your character i just want to make sure that people are playing your own stories because your stories are more important than the stuff in the background um and you know i got some criticism about lore event 2 because it was so big because it really pulled in people who didn't want to be involved and i wasn't going to do something as big as that again um until we had a reason to move to Livonia. And so that's when the, the fog and the hordes and the snow and all that happened, because I know that impacted everyone. Um, but it, I, we were trying to give you a reason that you could take your characters who were invested in Trenaris, um, who, who were caught up in, in, in the world of Trenaris, give them a reason to move and let you as the player give yourself permission to move the character there. Um, yes, the, the, the fog of the hordes was a lore fan. Um, the, so the, it didn't start as one. Uh, the very first time I did it was just to have fun because it had been a quiet evening. There was about 45, 50 people on the server and everyone had thousands of rounds of ammunition um, and, you know, nothing to shoot at. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to slide in this weekend and do a little something fun. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite things of that was throwing about, you know, a thousand infected and watching Wilson climb up on the roof of that, um, of the airfield with the saw and just go to town and i thought hey this is pretty cool this is pretty fun i'm not going to overdo it and then when like livonia is here we need a reason to get people over there so they're not upset about we're forcing you to spend 13 dollars to come to livonia kind of thing so that's what i do with that i don't want to do too many of those um but i use it as an opportunity to give people new things to follow if they wanted right um so and that's where i got to do chapter two and what's happening now with some of the characters out there, because there's a lot of new people add to the server who don't have the background of months of like, what the fuck's a spade? What is all this shit? I don't know what's going on. Do I have to care about this? No, you don't have to, but here's, you know, here's a jump on point if you want to. So that leads me into what the hell's a lore character, right? Um, I've people who have been, who have put in tickets or asked me DMs kind of stuff and want them to know, uh, you know, want to get involved. I've done three separate things, right? The most successful and the, the, 
biggest one that I've done is your own character, you know, soup the nuts. Everything is just you already existing. But, um, you know, I look into, you know, you come to me and say, I'd like to be involved a little bit. I was like, tell me a little bit about you. Um, and I will add something, you know, I'll give you a bit of information that's unique to you, you know, like, Oh, maybe you were on the plane that came into it, that hit the hot, um, hotel in Cherno, right? You were on that plane and when, it, Oh, because your character was on that plane, here's someone else that was on that plane too. Now go off and like meet other people and start piecing together a story. Yeah. Those are wildly successful. And there are dozens of you with things like that, that got yourselves, you know, little strings tied among you go off into the world and, you know, go, go together and do stuff. Um, the second way I've done is, you know, we watch the streams, you know, we watch you guys in game. We interact with you in game. Uh, we see the backstories you make the, the, your applications and things like that. And where we think something's cool. Um, well, one, I straight up just steal your cool stuff and put it into the big server lore because I'm shameless and your idea was better than mine. So I just steal it. And then, um, two, it's <laughs> like, um, if like your character's cool. So what happens if like this blank spot in your backstory, um, we tie something to that and then you're bebopping around the server and suddenly you bump into something like, wait, why does this say my name on that? Like, or, or is this talking about me? What the fuck? And I think um, at this point, like w whisper is a really good example of that. AMG did a great job putting together this neat medical record, put together all kinds of stuff, you know, about the character's backstory and hit it. And then of course he finds it immediately instead of like someone else getting it, find, bringing it to him. But so, yeah, he opens this up and he's like, why is my name in here? What, what, what's going on here? What, and then, Oh, people get excited and they, they feel good. And it's, um, it was always a fun revelation to watch people be excited and discover these things. So that's why we you know, did stuff like that. Um, and we try not to play favorites at any point. It was just whoever was being the most active and doing things. And we really try to spread all these things around uh, so that everyone gets a chance to do it. Just so happened that some people found their own shit. Like, yeah. it was totally not intended. Like, it was meant to be the complete opposite. Like, it yeah. just worked out that way. But to piggyback on what I, I kind of cut you off, I know you had more, but some people have already put in what we were basically going to put the bold, bold letters on. Everybody here is a lore character. Like yep. a lot of times what we see is that someone will die, their character will get killed. And then they, rather than like try and come up with a story themselves, they'll just put in a ticket and be like, Hey, load me up with some information. So I don't have to do the work. Like that's not, that's not what the, that's not what it's meant to be. We're meant to use your existing backstories and then we can tweak things to fit how we feel the world is existing. It's not meant to, here's this, here's your backstory, here's your date of birth, here's all this. It's, it's you guys are the characters. We are just the ones that are doing the set dressing in the background. Like, I love building custom shit. I love building custom areas. It's my favorite part of this entire server. Like, and I will happily do that for anybody. There's numerous people in here that can vouch for that. Like, I absolutely love doing that. And it, it's rewarding good RP. Like, if you aren't going to show me that you uh, want to take in the effort and, you know, feel like you deserve that, then, uh, you know what I mean? You can't really get upset that we don't want to leap at the idea of just helping people out like immediately. It's yep. you have to put in the, put in the work and then we will re reward you with those things. And like I said, I fucking love doing that, making clothes. That's why there's all the mod updates. Every single time there's a mod update, it's usually some sort of bug fixing or custom shit that's going in that other servers don't have. So for me, that's like my favorite personal thing is when I see somebody wearing like custom clothes or running into a custom area, like, holy shit, this is so cool. That's half the reason why I don't even play that much because I feel like I'd rather do that kind of stuff. So when I see someone on stream wearing something and people are asking about it or like, what the hell is that? Or they find a new area. I love that kind of stuff. That, that for me is my favorite part of it. But to go back to what he was saying is it's not about like, us loading you up with information and and another thing is like when you when i hear the word lore said out loud in the server it's just like oh. <laughs> it's just kind of like oh man it's just like i don't know it's hard to explain it's we're we're trying to because in real life certain things are going to happen we have to kind of set a backstory like this is how the outbreak happened this this and this just to make sure everything is cohesive and you know there's no is all continuity but for people to like get upset that we aren't responding you know fast enough it's one because we knew we were having this meeting and we were going to address it there but two it's like 
the mo most of the time people are looking for us to just give them all the creativity that they should be coming up with themselves. And in reality, it's meant for us to just tweak your backstory to fit the to the backstory that we're trying to tell, if that makes any sense. Shut up, Mischief. Um, so yeah, the, the, so the last part to that, so all, all it is when I, if you and I sit together, you, me and a player, we sit together and we come up with a character that I deem more a character where I come up with a background to it. And then I put it on you. That's when at that point, that's what I consider a lore character because you're out there running my goals. Right. Um, and even though you have, you know, you got it's your character, you put you work together with me on it, you know, you're out there playing it in the back of your mind, you have a goal that's something I told you to do. Um, and I like to use those as little as possible because then you're not creating your own story, like AMG was saying. Like, um, so when you put in tickets saying, I have this great idea for a character, like, can I can I can I be tied into the lore? And my thing to that is well, you got a great character idea right here. Just go do it. You don't need my permission. You don't need AMG's permission or anything. Um, you just like go run with your cool idea. Um, and noting what I just, you know, we just came up with, you know, um, you know, talking about like coming up with custom things for you or, you know, tying you, giving you a little bit of information, etc. cetera. Um, you know, then you can be out there and playing that character, enjoying yourself and running your own goals. And maybe sometime down the line, you'll be like, well, how does this person know about me? How, like, wh why is there a thing about me? And so, that, so that's what we're going for. So if you put it in, in tickets for that kind of thing, um, you say, I have this idea and I don't respond to you. First, I, I apologize because I never made any of this clear to anyone. Um, and so it's because you don't need my permission, like I said, to do these things. Go be your characters, uh, have your fun. You know, if you want to say that, you know, if you want to take credit and say that you're a spade or say that you were a scientist that wasn't responsible for the plague, by all means, get out there and do it. Um, you can't, um, a lot of people say this to me, this is the number one thing is like, I, I'm worried about interfering or, or contradicting the lore. And my number one answer back every time is you can't because your stories are more important. And that's why I never wanted to overshadow um, anything to, about. Um, want you to do your things and if something happens, you know if something comes up that i can tie you in loop you in i will and sometimes you may not even know what happened um well to go off what, yeah to what mdc said there are limitations like there if you're gonna try and just be like hey i'm part of the organization that's beside that's a central part of the backstory you're telling then yeah that's obviously like you know, like w w when you say it's about your story it's about the character that you come up with like you can't inserting yourself as just like I don't know. It's hard to, I don't well, know. I, like I have it on the edge of my tongue. It's just, if you're just be like, Hey, I'm a spade now. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. To me. Well, my point to like, that as is as long as you coordinate with that, with us, of course. Well, so part of the story too, um, I don't want to spoil too much. People don't know, you know, again, it's not a big thing. It's the background yeah, we're getting thing. Getting into meta territory. The yeah. more we talk about, um, a lot of what I like to do when I tell stories is, um, try to make you the player make a moral decision something about yourself kind of thing so that goes a lot but if you're if you a character who wants to pose as a spade or who was in the background yeah like, and this is just a for example um you know you're gonna have to work hard to make people believe that and you may get caught up in it um and that's just you know that's the way it goes and it'll, it'll roll like that so um yeah, if you want to check it and say hey can i do this thing you know we'll say yes or no and i said i'm going to be better about responding to things like that um so it's yeah role play it as you can you know role play your stories as much as you want and then if there's you know and don't worry so much about the background stuff unless you really want to you know just keep mindly like amg said earlier we're, we have full-time jobs so sometimes there'll be like a week where nothing happens or it's very quiet or there's no one's found something because you know we're working so just keep that in mind too don't get bored because you're trying to chase this down i'm not trying to make a puzzle for everyone to solve i'm just trying to you know you know, we're, we're seasoning it's flavor yeah. for it yeah, and the way really i look at the lore is like 
when we're tweaking things, it's not meant to like load you up with a whole backstory. It's meant to just tweak your existing backstory to fit into the universe. You know, like you have the Marvel universe, you have this yeah. universe where certain historical events may or may not have happened. The whole point of us tweaking things with you is to make sure that you exist in the same universe that we did. So if you were to say, you know, X country did something and it actually didn't happen in ours, that's where we would, you know, coordinate with you being like, actually, this happened this way. That for me is what I've always looked at as the lore tickets and tweaking things and whatnot, mm -hmm. as opposed to, or as well as what he said earlier. Yep. And sometimes like someone's like, I'd like to go there. What's happening in this country. And I'll say, well, I didn't come up with anything for that country. So what do you think? And then we're like, okay, cool. We're just going to grab it and we'll pull it in. Right. Um, okay. This is, I don't want to belabor that too much. This is like the only time that I'll probably ever talk about this in this capacity, because again, it's, you're more important than what I'm doing. It's just these little things that tie us together in the background that if you're looking for something to do, cool, you can do it and go find something or, oh, I found a box and like, what does this mean? Don't, yeah, don't make it seem like you have to, or it's like, it got to that point for a while where it was like other people were feeling like, oh, I'm left out or something, or mm -hmm. the lore is like taking over the server, which it kind of was. And people were taking it a little too far, which I guess is kind of our fault because we kind of went too hard on it, but it's meant to just be there in the background. It's just flavoring. And I mean, like I said, if you want that to be everything that you do, go for it. But at the same time, you have to remember that, you know what I mean? You're here to tell your story in our universe. That's pretty much all it is, just to make sure there's continuity between what you do and what we do. And that's fine if it still does. Like, if you choose to do that, that's on you. Like, I mean, it's really up to you if you want to pursue it or not. <laughs> okay. Um, we got time for questions now. Um, if if it got scrolled up through and I didn't, you know, we didn't see it, go ahead and throw it in here now. Um, if you are um, a little shy about asking a question and you want to drop it in a DM to one of us, uh, go for it. Um, I have, there's one question I have in here already in a DM. <laughs> um, and it it's about um, people continually hanging out in the same um, group on multiple characters so like you're in a group with someone you know you get you got a group your character dies you create a new character and go right back to that group um we're looking for patterns there again that's a kind of similar thing um so if if you're constantly rolling around with the same people doing the same things we're, we might have a conversation with you um i i none of us are here are gonna tell you that you can't um you can't play with your friends in the way that you want to play with your friends because you absolutely can. But, uh, but yeah, it's if, if you're repeatedly doing the same thing over and over with the same group, um, you know, just it's a the same character via different names, you know, quality role play. I and mean, we talked about that earlier, but that's the kind of thing. We see that happen a lot. Um, so just just be mindful of that. And like, you know, don't be surprised if you're rolling again, you know, as you know, uh, Billy, Bobby, and John, all the same fucking family in the same group. And we're going, hey, guy, you can't do that. All right. Um, so that's my and if you're that. if you're just like if you're going to kill a character and then come back like, hey, I'm Joe Blow's brother back for revenge. Like we're going to be speaking with you. We, we, we don't want that kind of stuff like you. You can't exist in the same world as a character if you're playing those people like it, it just doesn't work that way. You can't come back and be like, hey, I'm out for revenge against my brother. You killed when you were that brother. It's just it's metagaming. Oh, yeah. It's fail RP. It's literally every single rule we have. Yeah, that is um, a big one. What was there's something? Oh, yeah. Um, can we put together all the known facts of the lore? Well, that doesn't really work because not everyone would know the same things. Like, that's the whole point of the lore. It's you only know what you find. So if we were to put all of that in here, then those people wouldn't know that information. So it, we'd be giving you. At least, I don't know. That, that's my opinion. I don't know. Buckle, you might feel different. No, uh, no, I fully agree. It's like some people wouldn't know the stuff that, you know, people that hunt lore do. Like, so for you to know those things, it's it's just kind of, it's blanking everybody with. Uh, what are my thoughts on giant schlongs? Yeah, okay. If that was something I meant to bring up as well. If you, like, if you're building, like, three tall, high watchtowers, like, we're going to come tell you to dismantle that shit. Like, let, let's be realistic here. Why would anyone ever need a massive penis-sized base? Like, it just doesn't. 
Yeah, we'll just send the UN in. But seriously, like <laughs> building limits is something that I really want to discuss. And we're not I don't like stifling people's creativity. Like uh, I've seen some amazing bases that some would consider massive. And me personally, I don't want to limit your creativity as long as it's not doing something so egregious that it's going to affect server performance. It's not unrealistic looking and it just it is just blatantly ridiculous. Like the one I saw last night. Uh, let me find the screenshot. It's literally floating in midair. So, you know, like let, let's when you're building, let's just try and be realistic and also keep in mind that this is Daisy we're talking about here. The fact that this game even runs is still a miracle to me. So the more stress we add onto the server, it's only going to make things worse. So if everybody wants shitty performance, then build the biggest bases you can. But I would imagine nobody wants that. So if it was the one in Tarnow, I deleted it. What are future mods? Um, that was something that, well, if you guys have mod suggestions, put in a ticket. I have been looking at the squad, the squad mod, the place anywhere mod. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I'm really open for anything. I, I kind of wanted to wait to the meeting to see what uh, what people had. Yeah, we always Can take... you ratchet up tent and barrel spawns. No, yeah, that's the opposite of what we want. It's literally the opposite of what we want. You can make your own storage now. You can make. There's two craftable storage options that you have. Three technically Three, with the yeah. gun rack. Uh, any f plans for future help? I mean, to. It may sound like we're complaining as if like this is like an overburden and like we have so much work. That's just not the case. It's just when people take that and they go the extra length and get pushy, like it's totally manageable what we have or else we would get more people. It's it's not that it's not unmanageable. It's just that when people take that unmanageableness and then take ramp it up to 100 and it's like, OK, you're asking something unreasonable for us because, you know, we're only humans. There's only a, a finite amount of us and we have lives and jobs so no way on the heavy plate yeah that heavy plate carrier will never see the light of day coffee is actually something i have been working on. uh no spoilers all right. but all right hitting up a couple dm questions here quickly um let's see uh rules about the amount of bases you can raid in a single day what about the amount of people you can rob in a day as a group um so li limit that i think is the question um i don't see that as being an issue, um, but I feel like that would really limit role play significantly to drop the, to say you can can't rob more than one person per day. Um, yeah, that'd be impossible to police. I mean, yeah. just be reasonable. Like, a lot of these things like come down to you as a role player. Like, if you feel like it's questionable in the back of your mind, then it probably we give the main point one of the main points i wanted to make here is we don't ask a lot of you guys we don't have that many rules and i understand a lot of what happens here is people having to break old habits from just playing daisy in general or playing on other servers and i totally understand that we want to not have people have to take that split second and ask themselves, is this a rule break? It ruins the RP because then it's not organic and you're doing things outside of your head and outside of your character's mind. There's very limited rules on the server. As long as you follow them, and I feel like they're very reasonable, as long as you follow them, everything else should be fine. Like Maybe I'm wrong in that, but I feel like we don't want people to hide behind rules or have to think about rules or have to open up some spreadsheet or some giant Google document about what, what they're doing is, is allowed or not. Like it's pretty simple. As long as you speak to people, as long as you role play, anything can happen. That's another thing. Like you, people think that there has to be these certain things that need to happen in order for you to get hurt or robbed or whatever. As long as you're role playing, anything can happen. That's, that's the, that's the intrinsic beauty of Daisy is that there's danger on every corner. It's always, you know, a butt clenching moment. And on other servers and, you know, in other scenarios, that goes away because people know that they have to meet some certain prerequisite before they can get hurt or get killed. This, we don't want that. We want there to always be that element of danger. And it makes you think twice about one, who you trust, who you talk to, and who you talk down to, and how you interact with everyone else. So it's really on you guys to, you know what I mean? Respect that. Can you still catch rain with open barrels? That's something I'm looking into, actually, um, catching rain and stuff. All right. Um, I got one here. Um, there's a lot of questions, so give us... Um, yeah, I'm writing these down on, like, a notepad so we can get to them. All 
All right, so um, this one's kind of specific about spreading false info out of character to mess up someone's in-character story. Uh, this one's tough. At the very basic level, I would say that that is um, harassment in a way, uh, but it, it would be hard to police and understand. So if that's where put this ticket, uh, this uh, question into me, um, circle back with me after, because I think that's pretty specific. Um, I don't want to look into that more, but that is uh, just in general. Don't do that, guys. That's kind of gross. Um, next one is, are you allowed to hang out in Discord while you're in game if there's no game related talk? Uh, I mean, I would prefer that you don't because it's very easy to slip. Um, and, you know, very famously, I think that everyone know, remembers me going the fuck off one day about it because everyone was doing it one night um what are we talking about sorry I had hanging out. out in discord with someone i assume basically oh, yeah. you're running around playing with someone just shooting the shit while you're also in game i, I mean again um like it's very hard to police especially if you're in a separate call or something like that and you're just hanging out um just you know try to stick to you know uh good practices um don't don't be a dick about things. So, you know, if you're hanging out with someone who else is on the server and you're running around together and you're just in a voice call chatting, you know, that's one thing. But keep in mind, like if you're chatting in the voice call about unrelated things, you know, and you're wandering around and not talking in game, uh, then there's no opportunity for like people to overhear you and things like that. So generally, you know, I prefer, you know, no discord use with other people in the server at the same time. You know, best judgment here, guys. I'm going to rapid fire a couple of these because they're pretty yeah. simple answers. Uh, what was one? One was, can, is being insulted enough reason to blow someone's head off? It's the apocalypse. People will get killed for all kinds of reasons. As long as you're role playing with somebody, they, anything can happen. To you. Like, there is no, like, justify. I've heard this word so many times. Like, this is an invalid kill or this is not a justified kill. Like, I, I really am struggling to understand what the hell that even means. Like, when has a murder victim ever been justified no no one is ever right to take another human's life it could be the worst person in the world but you you know i mean you talk shit to somebody you know that's on you you know what i mean as long as you're role playing shit they can blow your head off all they want you know what i mean like don't talk shit to people if you don't want the you know the the consequences for it as long as there's role play involved anything can happen like we said earlier we want that danger that element of danger to always be there there's consequences for your actions thank you jules yeah, uh, vehicle mods. I don't think we'll ever look at any vehicle mods because vehicles are useless. Um, what was Russet saying? Oh, about OOC, not to mention blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, I think we've touched on this quite a few bit, like people taking things OOC. Like, if you are the kind of person that feels like you need to, like your OOC, your out of character actions are influencing you and your role play and other people around you, then I really feel like you might just need to take a break from the internet and take a break from gaming in general. Like, because we are here to have a good time. We're all adults here. We're all we want is for you guys to have fun. And the moment that that starts happening, it makes me and buckle and everyone else not even want to do this anymore. Like, and so the more times we see people getting upset out of character and it influencing everybody else, like just, just, just relax okay like we get it people die you know things happen especially if like you're streaming or something and you're making a video i get it but best practice and best advice i can give you is just take a step back get up from the computer for a little bit walk around walk outside get some fresh air and ask yourself is this worth getting upset over as roach just said at the end of the day we're all here to play games and have fun with our friends that's it Everything else is just secondary. And if you're the kind of person that loves drama and loves talking about drama and drumming up stuff that doesn't exist, then I hate to say it, but this is not the community for you. Uh, let's see. Quick one is like, how should, let me make sure I'm reading this correctly. Uh, if someone chooses not to perma, how should the person proceed with memory, injury, RP, and, and that kind of thing? Um, it's it's up to you. Um, you know, it's I've seen some fantastic, you know, injury role play. You know, people will take a couple days, you know, IRL, 
which is a couple weeks in game to convalesce, um, get better, get stronger over time. Um, not everyone's into that. So, you know, if someone does it minimally or not at all and just say, hey, you know, I got better, uh, that's fine too. Up, up to you guys. Um, I, I think it's cool when people do it. I think it's cool if like their memory is spotty because shock can do things to you like where you don't you don't remember traumatic things that happen so entirely in your court um there's no right or wrong way to do it um just just be believable um one is asking for is it possible to sum up the known facts about lore and backstory etc uh, so um the the most basic common bits are in that lore channel um and that's the only known facts I will give. If you know someday the server comes, you know, comes to an end, and people want to know what I have, I will post the my story, etc. If you want to know, anyone. but for now, what I, we release publicly is basically like a news broadcast that your character would have seen, or possibly may have not, possibly may have seen before the shit went down. Everything else is you have to discover in game. So if we were to yeah. catalog stuff that you know other players found. Not only is that metagaming, it's ruining their, you know, their chance to have something unique and, and to pull on threads. Like, I don't know, it's just, I think we kind of touched on it earlier. Putting all that in one place would be telling everybody information that only a few people would know. Okay. Um, we're up at our hour. I want to make sure that we hit all the big questions. And if we don't get to your question, um, MG's writing them down. They're also still here in the thing. Uh, we will run through and put out some answers for it. Uh, and again, if there's anything that um, you came away with at the end of this and you felt like it's you were mad or upset about something um, or you just want more clarification, you know, just let us know. And I, you know, I, I have time to just jump into another room and explain it. Um, let's see. I saw a couple quick questions that we can hit out before we end. Oh, shit. If they're uh, adding at me, I just can't read it. I'm, I'm a little. Um, what do we got? I think that's all the major ones. Oh, furniture mods. Like if, if you find a furniture mod, forward it over to us. Yeah, we'd actually love to have more things to paint the world with. I love map building. Love, love. Oh, thank you, Lope. That's one I wanted. Um, um yeah i love making custom things in the map so if you find something or anything that adds more animations you know throw them at us dm or ticket that's great. um yeah right. and most of most of the furniture mods that are on the workshop are buggy as shit or we would have them already i think op base op base mods whatever that um when do alts become excessive um i there's a lot of context to this question here uh so I don't know if there is a point where alts become excessive. I think that, um, you know, it's, it's up to all of us, you know, right, right at the very start of quality role play, it's up to all of us to be, um, you know, respectful in our role play, pay attention, be cognizant of what we're doing. Um, everyone in here is capable of knowing meta information and not using it. Um, and like, if you played any other role playing game at all, like it's, in this case, we're talking about meta information. It's like, oh, this character knows this, but I don't know that. You know, you're all great role players, and you can just ignore that kind of thing. Um, you know, so based on the context of this question, um, yeah, like if, if someone's on like two sides of a conflict, um, you know, at, at that point, pick the one that you think you like the best, kind of thing. Um, but I don't agree that excessive alts slows down progress of role play because it's a big world, you know, that people can exist in. So if you don't run into someone again, you don't run into someone again. Like there are friends of mine in real life I have not seen for years, you know, in a planet full of like 7 billion people. So it's, you just, you might not see people anymore. You see them rarely. Um, but if someone is doing something where they're like using multiple characters and sharing that information about it, or like, you know, what they, one character dies and then, and then the new character goes to that other person's stash, you know, if you see that happening, you know, look, make us aware of it. And then we can go, um, we can go from there on it and we'll, we'll look into it more. I think you just touched on something as well about, I've seen, 
I've seen people say that metagaming is only if you act on it. Well, that is true. Like, why even give them the option? Like, if you're throwing meta in the Discord, you're the one to blame. It's not on the people that choose to use or don't use it. It's on you. Like, just don't metagame in the Discord. Like, it's it's a pretty simple concept. And shifting the blame on people that, oh, they don't have to use it. I mean, then why even give them the, the option to use it? Like, just, just don't do it. Like, I don't know. It just seems pretty simple to me. Uh, let's see. Where's the weed airdrop coming to? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just going to keep my mouth. Well, um, do something. I say, so can we put in a ticket? So, um, yes, you can, you can request, um, custom items. It's, uh, AMG does literally all of them. Um, and it's just up to when he has time. And if he thinks it's cool, um obviously i'm speaking for him right now but um sometimes i will write little custom descriptions for things too um and yeah you can put them in um uh, we like when there's role play that generated the existence of that item um you know you you come out alive from a big fire fu uh, fight or you know um you're providing a service to the server like um you know we've worked with uh, roach and you know he likes to you know, catch a lot of the new people to Daisy, so that's why we kind of spoof up his area a little bit, so they have some place to. Oh, this is how I Daisy, you know that. So that kind of thing. Um, but there are dozens of custom items that AMG's done some great work on in the game. So yeah, just put in a put in a ticket and then be patient as the yeah, big one. And we'll caveat that with it's to reward people with existing role play, like if to warrant the development time. If you are just like, hey, I just rolled a new character. Can you build me an outfit so I can get going out there? Like, if you haven't role played and if nobody knows your character, then I'm sorry, but getting you a custom item just isn't going to be on the priority list. It's it's not to get you in costume to start your story. It's to reward your existing role play with stuff that makes sense. Like if you lived a long time and you had, you know, a, a someone one of your friends died and that heirloom weapon is still being passed down that's the perfect example or like roach for example has been alive for a while blah 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 all these things are rewarding existing rp so if you're like hey i just rolled a new character I haven't got it started yet can i get this this and this you know what i mean it's it's just not going to be it's, it's kind of unreasonable see so, uh are we going to add more trenaris buildings to La already in the works yeah, uh, as soon as the map tools started working, uh, were updated for Livonia, we started cranking out tons of new stuff on the map. And one of the reasons that we removed a lot of the red zones was so that people would stop being scared and go look at them. Go look at yeah. the new things we built. Well, a, a lot of people missed the fucking point with that. It was basically like, hey, don't fucking come down here. Rather, than, But we got nasty messages nonetheless. Like, So <laughs> if you're one of those people, go fuck. I'm just kidding. But seriously, like, you know what I mean? The, that goes that, that says another thing. Like, at the end of the day, we're all here to have a good time. We're all volunteers. If you're going to come at one of us in any manner other than like an adult or, you know, willing to have like a, a you know, intelligent, civilized conversation, we're probably not going to tell you to go fuck yourself because we're here to do a job. But you're definitely going to be in the back of our mind as someone that, you know, if you ever do, hey, can I get something custom? The odds of you getting that, you're going to be more towards the lower end of the spectrum. So try and be respectful to us because, you know what I mean, we are volunteers at the end of the day. We love doing this. We love all you guys. I've met so many cool people doing all this, and I love doing it, even though my clients and the rest of my life probably hates it. But at the end of the day, we all want you guys to have a good time. And at the end of the day, that's all we're here for. So everything else, OOC drama, all this and that, people nitpicking at each other, making clicks and, and acting like you're in high school. Just get rid of all that shit. Just play the game, have fun, tell good stories. And at the end of the day, if that's what's going on, then everybody will be fine and we'll all be happy. Case in point, rant over. <laughs> um, did I miss any other question uh, primarily pertaining to the big topics we talked about today? Um, jam them in real quick drop them on me in a dm or at uh well at both of us uh what did someone just say Let me see. was it a goof question 
there's okay. storage limit to traders. I mean, the storage limit is 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 what it is for everybody. It's five craftable items, and those that's combined. That's not saying five crates, five gun okay. racks, five this. It's five total, and then that multiplies if you have people that live with you. So it's five per person. So every trader that I know of has multiple people that live with them. So I'd imagine they're all under the limit, and if they're not, they get treated the same as everybody else because. Uh, as just the nature of being a trader with massive amounts of inventory, th you know, they're the ones that are going to have the biggest hit on server performance. So they are the people that we watch the most, the closest. So to think that the traders are somehow immune is actually the complete opposite. Backwards hats. A lot of this stuff requires 3d modeling and I don't have the time, the energy or the desire to throw more of my life away, which I might do, but who the fuck knows? We'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, buried stuff counts as your limit. It's it's per person, um, not per base. So um, just if you're in a base, then we limit it a little bit. Um, this is something that I think that we can revisit. You know, limit it like le lowering it or so, like increasing it so it's just flat, not confusing. Um, but yeah, like if you've got a stash house on the northwest corner of the map, but your base is on the southeast corner of the map, that's all the same thing. It's per it's per person for your storage. Um, uh, someone yeah. just DM me about, oh, sorry, I did that. No, uh, keep going. Okay. Uh, and then, so the next thing is like, if you're over eight people in, in your base right now, because you know, you, you feel a little awkward to say like, Hey, who, who, who do we pick to kick out? Uh, that sounds like a shitty situation. Um, and there's some rope like, ah, it's getting a little cramped in here. Maybe we can spread out a little bit. So, something like that. I, I don't want to dictate how you role play, but, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, that one's tough and I, and uh, it's an awkward position to be in, but yeah, to try, try to work it out. And if you can't, if you really, if you can't get to a point where you can work it out and people are going to fight about it or, or be offended, c come to, um, me and AMG and we'll help you. Someone, someone DM me, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me see. I've noticed people using friend streams to find them and log in at the right time to meet them. This is blatantly in the rules. Like it's clear-cut metagaming if you aren't in character in the game to know this information then that's metagaming you would not know that information there's no we're not psychics here nobody would know that so if you're using streams to find people or using other means to locate them or meet up with them or send them messages that's against the rules like it's it couldn't be more simple like i said before we don't have many rules and it seems a lot of people are always trying to dance around those rules and it's you know what I mean? That's just the nature of human beings. But if you just respect the rules, just play the game. Like I can't, I don't know how many times I need to say this, like just have fun. Don't worry about all the other nonsense. Whatever happens, happens. It's that's how RP goes. The nature of RP is that it never goes the way you want it to. To that note, though, have you guys like logged off in a similar area or something, you know, and it's it's okay to shoot your friend a message saying, "Hey, I'm going to get on at like seven. You know, you want to start playing seven. That, but yeah, if, that's fine. If, if you get on at seven, you know, and you go wandering around, then your friend just shows up because they know where you are for what you know. However, they got the info. I mean, come on, guys. We we talked about that earlier. You know, be it stream or a Discord message or whatever. Um, and just just so it's clear, it's it's craftable item, craftable storage items we're limiting um, because that's that's more and more items because that we're you can make them out of thin air. Like right. someone said, if you find all those tents, well, you won't be able to because there's a finite amount of them. That's that's the balance. Okay. So that's what, like you said, that's what makes them. Yep. Um, yeah. Barrels and sea chests. Well, barrels not right now because they're fucking inventory bug. But like sea chests, like they're at a premium. These things are are. That's why they're so important and valuable and why people will go to lengths to, to maybe raid your base to get some because, you know, God, God, I want to I want to put some shit down. So they want your barrel. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's craftable stuff because thin air. Yep. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Check so do you guys want the squad mod or not? General yeah. Yeah. Mod. Your nay in, in the chat. Let's get a general. I'll, I'll link it to you. It's more camouflage. It's more. Uh, I don't know. Here, I'll show you. It's it's um, it's a lot like, of military clothes. Yeah, like I don't know if you guys noticed that all the retextures that I've done were more like I have. I don't think I've done any military retextures because 
everyone already is running around like a GI Joe, and it's just, it's just, just doesn't sit right to me. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, they just wanted for the thigh pouches. All right, I, I know that's why they wanted. Uh, yeah, throw jump into that straw poll. If we get an overwhelming kind of thing, um, I, we, we like adding new mods. We just don't want to overburden everyone having to download a three hundred meg mod all the time. Um, we we absolutely want yeah. more regular clothes. We want you know more feminine looking clothes. Um, there's a lot of stuff, and we're we're kind of it's we're at the mercy of what's on the workshop and what we can come the, up with ourselves. The more mods we add, the more it opens us up to things out of our control, random updates, things breaking. So we try and limit the mods to only like essential stuff. And Winstride, I spoke to him. We can repack his. I just haven't done it, so we can do more of that. And you can we can edit anything that's already in the game. So if you want more stuff, just hit me up with it. And if it makes sense, I'll do it. Okay. And uh, the ponchos, don't get me started. <laughs> I will not be retexturing any ponchos. And we're not going to delete them just because you don't like them. Some people do. We just limited them so not everyone's a fucking Definitely more shamogs, though. Sh yeah. Shamogs. Okay. Um, I saw one question that went um, unanswered. By Cynics, will we ever talk about? Will we ever increase the groups up to ten? No, we talked about that early on. We don't want to go over ten. Um, yeah, and Pupper Wines. It's time for his dinner, and we're seventeen minutes past the hour, so I think we can wrap it up there. If there's anything pressing, any questions we didn't answer, um, guys, we're always here. DMs, tickets. If for me personally, if my light is green in Discord, feel free to DM. I won't always be able to reply to you, but I won't leave you on red forever. Um, I can't speak for AMG, but I think he just ignores Frank actively. Wolf, wolf. Well, I'm, I apologize, okay? I got a lot going on here, okay? <laughs> so if I left anybody on red in the past, I, I have a running joke with some people that they always just get buried in my DMs. Like, I'm sorry, okay? But yeah, Frank is easy to ignore, so fuck him. <laughs> uh, but okay. um, I'm just kidding. I love you. But people asked if we're looking for more staff. We may reach out i mean like i said before it's it's a manageable thing bill and them they left they stepped down because they're disloyal and they're, I'm, I'm totally kidding but I'm, I'm totally joking by the way it's we've been at this for six months you know what i mean if we hadn't moved to livonia i think we the server probably wouldn't be open still so yeah. you could make the case that me and buckle staying on are the insane ones so and that's another thing. People were messaging me about like, what's going on? Is there drama? Like it, it goes into what I said earlier, me buckle, all of us were all brothers till the end. And if there was ever another server where we're going to start up again for another game in the future, it would eventually be the same OG team all over again. You can't blame people for wanting to, you know, step down and do their own thing. And now they're back on the server, having a great time. And that is what it is. We're all brothers. But the main point I wanted to make is it goes into what I said earlier. If you're the kind of person that just lives off drama and lives off making shit up that doesn't exist, take a step back and look at yourself because not only does that affect your own stress and your own negativity in your life, it affects everyone else around you and it brings down your own mental state. So I don't understand how people can live that way, but that's just society we live in nowadays. But maybe it's time for some people to just take a deep breath Take a step back, zoom out a little bit, and reevaluate what's important. Like I said multiple times already, we're here to have a good time, tell compelling stories, drama free, and have fun. That's literally it. 32 votes, no. 22 votes, yet. Yeah. Wow. I, I wasn't mm. expecting that. Okay. Um, we'll keep looking at the thing. I'm going to feed my dog. Since Mischief keeps saying it, yes, I was drunk running around with her. She picked up a jar of jam and said, I hate jam. Re clearly referencing her thing. And I said, yeah, well, that jar of jam pays for the server. And I broke Oh, yeah. I wanted, wall. Speaking of jam, I wanted to paste this in here. Uh, let me make sure it's... Hold on. Um, jam mentioned this last night, and I felt like this is a perfect thing to end. Everyone take a second to read that. The rules are here to guide your path. Your imagination is what sets everything else apart. That's the, That's been one of the biggest problems is that too many people are dependent on the rules to dictate how they live. We're here to tell stories. As far as your imagination goes, let it take you there. 
don't sit there and worry about am I breaking the rules? As long as you're following the basic rules that we have, which I feel like isn't hard, then just go with it and let your imagination run wild. That's really that's really all I can say. So perfect way to close on Jam's wise words of wisdom from uh, Palpatine himself. <laughs> and he said that. Those are his own words, not, yeah. not ours. <laughs> that's that's so funny that you guys said that earlier because he said that himself. But uh, I guess we're closing up. Just wanted to say I love all you guys. We all I mean, the only reason we still do this is because we genuinely care a lot about this community and we want you guys to have fun. So we throw our personal lives away at sometimes to make sure that the, everything is going well here, not to like throw a pity party or anything, because like I said, this is all manageable. It's when things start not getting fun for everyone else is then it becomes not fun for us. So if you guys see anything, say something, put in tickets. Don't ever feel like you're bothering us. Follow the rules. Have fun. That's it. Like, that's pretty much all we can say. I love you guys. Well, RP time. RP time. Get the fuck out of here. All right, y'all. Y'all be easy.